Yes, summit is very significant. The president is here. We also were witness um, yesterday to the new energy of uh, post-Brexit UK returning to Africa promises an exciting decade ahead. The theme um, for me um, is macroeconomic stability to economic uh, transformation. Macroeconomic stability is a necessary condition for any serious sustainable transformation agenda. Our transformation agenda is captured in the present vision of, I quote, building a prosperous and self-confident Ghana that is in charge of her economic destiny, a transformed Ghana that is prosperous enough to be beyond needing aid, and a reformed Ghana that engages competitively with the rest of the world through trade and investment. This is what has been christened a Ghana beyond aid. Under the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda, therefore, we aim to accelerate economic transformation based on rapid and inclusive growth through human capital development, development of agriculture and agribusiness, and value-added manufacturing. This is intended to double our per capita income over the next decade. But such transformation must necessarily be underpinned by macroeconomic stability. Without a sustainable macroeconomic stabilization program, a robust and sustained transformation of our economy cannot happen. Mr. Chairman, when President Akufuazu's government assumed office in January 2017, the first order of business as a government was to reverse the decline in economic fortunes that we inherited and to restore the economy to a path of sustainable growth and job creation. This required clear commitments to fiscal discipline through ensuring policy clarity, transparency, and credibility. At the same time, the country had just suffered a major setback in the IMF supported extended credit facility program, which had derailed in 2016. After a thorough diagnosis of the factors behind the declining economic performance in general and fiscal slippages in particular, our economic management strategy was woven around five pillars to address the issue of fiscal sustainability. These fiscal policy pillars were to improve revenue management, effective and efficient expenditure management, prudent debt management, sustainable wage bill management, and capping and realignment of earmark funds to create some fiscal space for new priority government flagship programs. Our fiscal management strategy was complemented with deliberate and well thought out inclusive growth interventions with at least 16 flagship programs, including the One District, One Factory program, the Planting for Food and Jobs program, One Village, One Dam program, and the famous Free Senior High School education intervention, just to mention a few. These macroeconomic stabilization and inclusive programs are being executed within our economic philosophy of a center-right party. It has been broadly anchored on providing economic relief, including tax cuts and the preferential option for the poor, pursuing economic recovery and stability, leading to robust medium-term growth, and promoting long-term growth and economic modernization through technology and infrastructure. Over the past three years, the competent and prudent management of the economy through the mix of stabilization, growth, and social interventions has resulted in a significant turnaround of the Ghanaian economy, as evidenced by several improvements in key macroeconomic indicators. I'll mention a few. Growth. Overall economic growth rate has doubled, rebounding strongly from 3.6% in 2016 to 8.1% in 2017, before moderating to 6.3% in 2018, averaging 7% over this three-year period. The inflation rate, which used to be double jitted fell from 15.4% in December 2016 to 7.9% in December 2019, the lowest rate in recent times. Interest rates. 
The strong macroeconomic fundamentals have reflected in a generalized downward trend in interest rates. The Bank of Ghana policy rate reduced from 25.5% in 2016 to 16% at the end of 2019. This is good for Ghana because when the cost of borrowing is low, businesses expand, jobs are created, and spending rises to encourage further production. On the external front, the trade balance has improved from a deficit of 1.7 billion in 2016 to a surplus of 1.8 billion in 2019. Gross international reserves, the stock of gross international reserves increased by 1.67 billion to 8.7 billion as at November 2019, providing cover for 4.2 months of import cover. This compares with the end of December 2018 position of 7 billion. Fiscal operations. The fiscal deficit declined from 6.5% of GDP in 2016 to 3.9% in 2018. Provisional data from operations in 2019 indicate that the fiscal deficit has been contained within the fiscal responsibility deficit threshold of 5% of GDP. The primary balance recorded a provisional surplus of 0.9%. I must mention that the primary balance turned positive for the first time in many years in 2017 since we came into government. The public debt consistent with the fiscal operations, the stock of public debt rose to 62.3% and it's now 59.2% excluding the financial sector bailout, which costs us over $12 billion CDs. Mr. Chairman, we thus successfully concluded the IMF program in April 2019 to ensure sustainability and the irreversibility of our hard-earned macroeconomic stability gains. We have institutionalized a number of measures, including the strict enforcement of the Public Financial Management Act to ensure adherence to good economic governance principles. The passage of the Fiscal Responsibility Act to mandatorily cap the annual fiscal deficit to 5% of GDP and maintain a positive primary balance. The establishment of a Presidential Fiscal Respons Responsibility Advisory Council to advise the President on transparent, accountable, and credible fiscal management. The Presidential Financial Stability Advisory Council to strengthen and reinforce the stability of the financial sector. Government also established two social partnership programs, one of organized labor and the Ghana Employers Association, the other of faith-based organizations to provide a platform for cohesive and trustful relationship between the partners on national development matters. As you can see, we have not only implemented prudent policies to restore macroeconomic stability, which is very necessary for a very successful transformation agenda, we have also put in place measures to make sure that the stability is long-lasting and irreversible. Mr. Chairman, I will now outline a few of the transformative programs we are implementing to change the lives of Ghanaians. In the agriculture sector, several initiatives have been undertaken to create jobs and improve the lives of our people. These initiatives include planting for food and jobs, planting for exports and rural diversification. We have also, Mr. Chairman, started a diversification of our exports and through selected tree crops, the Rearing for Food and Jobs program for a competitive and more efficient livestock industry through the supply of improved local breeds of livestock and poultry. In the industrial sector, government is implementing its flagship one district, one factory, where about 181 factories are currently in various stages of completion. Government is also implementing the stimulus package to support viable industries. We have also, as the President mentioned, focusing on the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development um, Business and also the iron ore and steel industry. In foreign direct investment, as um, UFE exemplified, we are vigorously pursuing to 
policies to attract foreign investment as part of measures to promote long-lasting growth. Indeed, we are attracting a number of multinational companies, including those in the global automotive companies, Toyota, Volkswagen, Nissan, Renault, Honda, Sinotrack, and Suzuki. We continue to build strategic partnerships to attract more FDI, and this is why we are here today. We are also accelerating our infrastructure development, especially in the energy and transportation sector. Great opportunities also exist in the public-private partnership arrangement as a vehicle for delivering critical infrastructure. We have reformed and cleaned up the financial sector to make it more credible, better capitalized, sustainable, sound, and position the sector to undertake major transactions to support our development efforts. In the process, governments have had to intervene to bail out troubled financial institutions to help save some 4.6 million depositors funds and to protect Ghanaian jobs. We are leveraging technology to support our transformation agenda through a number of digitization innovations uh, which the President talked about. I should also take this opportunity to re-echo the hosting of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area in Ghana. This, Mr. Chairman, gives us a real locus to be the regional hub that we have always dreamt of. Aviation and logistics, education, healthcare, religion, manufacturing, petroleum, and financial service. We thus really assume a legitimate locus to be the gateway to Africa for all investment and trade transactions. Mr. Chairman, the above transformation initiatives offer numerous investment opportunities for investors, and I'll urge you all to be part of the success story of Ghana. I believe it is clear we have not only restored and sustained macroeconomic stability, but also put in place the building blocks to transform the economy of Ghana, to change the lives of people of Ghana and attain a Ghana beyond aid. Our philosophy, policy of clarity, credibility, and transparency is paying off with a clearly committed and competent team under the leadership of His Excellency Nana Akufuado. As we speak, we have already initiated the processes leading to the issuance of a $3 billion euro bond in the coming days to finance key projects to generate growth create jobs, and support the country's development. We'll also be, be listing um, a minerals investment fund which will securitize our ro royalties on the London Stock Exchange. Our 2019 3 billion euro bond placement was a runaway success as we achieved the longest majority of 31 years on the continent, our lowest rates ever, and the largest in Africa's history of an oversubscription of 21 billion or seven times. Let me take this opportunity to invite the international business community to participate in Ghana's bonds to be issued in 2020. Ghana is open for investment. Let us just, let us join together with courage and discipline and not be intimidated to invest in the Ghana and Africa we want. Let this decade, 2020-2030, be a decade post-Brexit Brexit Britain coming back to its first love, Africa and its Commonwealth. And let's guarantee that those investments do come to Africa. Welcome to Ghana. Thank you very much.